It is now 6 p.m. So we will begin the work study session for the Adrian City Commission on April 1st, 2024. Roll call, please. Mayor Heath. Present. Commissioner Banky. Present. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Castleberry. Present. Commissioner Gaston. Present. All commission members present, with the exception of Commissioner Roberts. At this time, I will turn it over to City Administrator Greg Elliott. Thank you, Mayor. Well, the first item is for uh, you all. In various fashions, you've asked that we talk about your rules and procedures and or a training related to your rules and procedures or you know, the way you conduct your meetings or can conduct your meetings, those meetings, five doors, et cetera. Uh, so we have this specific request from a couple of commissioners to have a training related to that. Uh, we have at least one other commissioner who's asked to talk about the particular language of the rules and procedures. So I put this on the agenda for you to have that uh, conversation wherever it may take you. I will say that we talked about the rules and procedure last in 2021. I checked uh, before I came down here. That was the time that you added the three minute uh, time limit to this. So that's the last time you looked at it. Uh, with that as an introduction, I'll turn it back over to uh, you all and uh, let you decide uh, what exactly it is you want to talk about in that context. Well, I'm, I was one that emailed about the training with the rules and procedures. I think it's beneficial to us before we start making decisions about possible changes. And I remember when people were talking about how you, I don't take things lightly. We're going to change some rules of order or something like that. I think we need to be fully informed before we decide just to make it on our personal biases or opinion or thoughts at that time. I like, and I think, you know, Fred Lucas, I think, was brought up, who's excellent at that training to provide us with information not only about rules and procedures, but it can provide us with all like what is our actual role, what is our responsibility, what happens, you know, if we put anything in writing at any time, or what if we say something, is it a personal thing or is it a view of the city? I think all those things need to be just put on the table and made clear to all of us what we're talking about, what we're doing. Right, Bert, can you talk uh, about the kind of training that Fred does and what that would look like? Well, he does. It's basically similar to the NML OMA training, Open Meetings Act training. So really what he does is he goes through and he, he basically lays out what is a meeting for, what is your role, what is your responsibility, and how does the Open Meetings Act affect you personally. Um, and it really is just a top to bottom. I've watched him do it a couple times. The last time I was in Brooklyn. It lasts about an hour. Um, and then it's question and answer also. Um, but it's it's not a, a, a meeting. It's a training. It's, you know, he will be teaching you, lecturing you, I guess. Uh, but he does take questions. Uh, I will tell you, I learned something. From and I've been doing this for a long time. Um, He's very good at it. Is there an advantage or disadvantage between Fred doing it and the Michigan Municipal League since we're also members of MML and they've trained some of us already? I don't know. I've never been to MML's training. I've been to Fred's training. Um, I, I doubt very seriously MML has any more experience than Fred. Does, so. He's probably the most experienced municipal attorney, possibly in the state of Michigan. Yeah, I think yeah, you know, you know, the advantage would be he knows us. I don't know who the to such into it if that was just a question why they would do that. I know how the Michigan Association of Planning does those, does their training. I used to do some of them. So they would pay the consultant firm, like I got $500 to do it. I told a training and I had a consultant essentials for them. So 
able to say. I do believe it would be Chris, who is the um, legal um, counsel for Mr. Gen Municipal League. The unique advantage that he brings is that he was a former um, city commissioner and a mayor, so sat in our seats um, from both sides in terms of representing uh, municipalities, but also being an elected official um, and a mayor. Yeah, I mean, it's probably a, di a slight difference in perspective, is what I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's about you know, I know the league. The league is a lobbying organization. Goal is to lobby on behalf of cities, municipalities, as opposed to an attorney that represents you. Your job is to protect you. Other than that, I, I think probably either of them could do a, a great job at it. And he is if the uh, lead charge maybe right. to do it by the hours. And is there I think actually we, we don't charge? Oh, it's free. Oh, there you go. Well, there you go. There's, There's, a, There's a distinct advantage. Why are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> well, we encourage municipalities to take the free. We don't charge. There we go. Okay, well, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> is there an opportunity as well? Because I know with the planning commission uh, meeting that we had, there were some concerns about uh, uh, that chair following the, the directions of the OMA and so forth. Could we have um, other members from other commissions and so forth trained in Open Meetings Act? I don't think that would be hurt us in any means. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that, I, but I think what you're looking for or what I'm hearing you guys say, I think this is going to be more tailored towards you. I, I don't know that you want to dilute it I, and get off on, you know, it's really easy to go down the rabbit holes. I don't know that I would, you are different than the Planning Commission and Maybe we just do more than one okay. if, if other people are interested, but I, I would keep it to the edge. I think the subcommissions could benefit separately from you know from the same training, whether it's the planning commission or ZBA or, or whomever, you put them all together in one group and do the se secondary training, perhaps. Right. I, Again, I think this is a, I, I concur with Commissioner Schwartz on this. I know that um, we've had questions about how we conduct our meetings and some requests from our citizens. And I thought this training gives us a, will give us a strong idea how our meetings should operate with the guidance of our, our, our council. And then we can make sure that we're doing everything correctly. I, I like that idea better than piecemealing a little thing here and piecemealing a little. I think that gets confusing and then it just kind of everything spirals out that way. So one strong training and then a conversation about how we're going to conduct our meetings makes more sense to me getting that all done in one fell swoop, you know, rather than piecemeal, some resolutions together here and there. Um, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, I agree. I think if we're going to have a workshop, I think the question and answer period will be very, very valuable for us as, as a, our group. We really start to talk about all those parts and pieces. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. I, if that's the route you're going, I think you need to talk about, you know, what kind of session this is, because as Burke mentioned, it's intended as a, a training. And so mm -hmm. in the context of the training, then you are not going to be able to have discussions amongst yourselves at that meeting. You could have a set of a follow-up at the pre meeting, perhaps. The training will not be an open meeting as such. And, Involve dialogue. You know, many you, questions. They, you know, they're all yeah. back and forth. Right. Dialogues so. have to be between yeah. council right. and right. That's what I was trying to meant. Sorry. I think that's that's good. It gives us the time to learn, yeah. and then we come back to a pre meeting and have that dialogue. How soon do you think we could schedule it? Whenever you guys give me dates, we'll get it on. I think sooner rather than later yep. would be better than later. One question we know we want to ask is about public comment and that kind of stuff, but we want to wait until after we have the frame. Mm -hmm. 
you guys want to do evening? Daytime? I'm flexing. I, I, I will make myself. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll make myself. How about, the, how about the second or the fourth Monday? Six. We're the work when we schedule the thing. Mm -hmm. the oh, that's true. The second mm -hmm. one, we can't do the second. <clears throat> that's true. We have meetings, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five Mondays, six months. Oh, well, yeah, there is. Yeah. I saw that on the calendar. We could do the 22nd. Um, the 29th, we're also awesome. Awesome. 29th would work if, if you guys are trying to stick to one day. Yeah. We couldn't do the 8th, obviously, the 15th, we're here, um, and the 22nd, 29th, or 29th would work for me. Yeah, that's great. Anybody that can't do the 29th? Can't do the 29th. You cannot. Is there another day that works in April? That... Does it have to be in the evening, or do we do we care? No, no. no. Depends on the time. April thirty. So you have to have after three thirty. Oh, April what? Yeah, depends on the day. Wait, is it Tuesday the thirtieth? Um. That's you got to We could do it in the evening, but during the day we're in court all day. Later. No. Sorry, my Tuesday evening, the thirtieth. No, I think we can make that work. That work? Yes. Yeah. Tom? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Angie? Yes. Look at what are you? What time? Tuesday, April thirtieth. How how early can we start on the thirtieth, everyone? At four, five, six, huh? I can do anything. I can do anything. Yeah, I can do anything. Anytime you want to do it. Yeah, when do you get on? I could do we could do four if you if you think if anybody wants to start well we don't close at about four oh, thirty. Five? Four thirty or five. Two or five. Two or five o'clock. Two o'clock. Five PM. Um, now Fred doesn't have anything written on the calendar, so okay. I'm going to double check tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, putting, I'm putting it on the calendar. You got the family calendar. Would it um, benefit Fred if any questions were forwarded ahead of time about uh, it, or scenarios or things? In uh, my experience with have? Fred, it doesn't matter. Okay. But if you would like, it your search. Because if he doesn't know, he will get you. He will find the answer. Okay. Anything more we want to talk about on that subject tonight? Or do we want to get from planning? We're just doing then um, open meetings, not FOIA discussion. We can do FOIA if you'd like, but. It's two, usually that's two different trainings, but if right, you want okay. to ask FOIA questions, Fred would be happy to answer them. But I think his outline would be open, mostly. Can you get a model of this at the same time? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on that tonight? Uh, number two. So we were notified uh, last week, actually, from uh, Toby Berry, who heads up our region for the state housing plan work group that we have going on. Uh, the grant opportunity or grant yeah. opportunities called the My Neighborhood, MI Neighborhood uh, program through MISHTA. The CDB, as I understand it, and Jay will speak more on this, the CDBG money that used to flow to non-entitlement communities now 
is housed within this program at Peshta. And uh, this is the first rollout of it. And the first round of that opens, application window opens today, closes in two weeks. And so we were able to get this on your agenda for today uh, from the regular meeting agenda, give us authority to apply for uh, some of these funds. We thought it beneficial to try to get in in the very first round, there are other rounds, but there's $8.8 .8 million for our region. It's not a lot. When we're talking about a region that includes Livingston, Washington, Monroe, Lenaway, Jackson, and Hillsdale counties. So they expect quite a bit of competition from that, but thought we could possibly get a leg up if we got in. And then some others, like I said, it was just announced, and so a lot of places won't be, we hope, set up to apply in this first round. But we would like to. So Jay's going to uh, talk about the uh, programs we would like to apply to, or we would like to use it for. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the time. Uh, you'll see there's two programs that we've uh, two parts to the program that we'll, we'd like to apply for. The first one is a rehabilitation grant um, that's for owner occupied single family housing. Could be a, could be multi family housing, but we're focusing on single family housing. Um, they can get up to forty thousand dollars to rehabilitate their home, uh, and there's a list on the second page of qualifying. Page one, page third page. Second page. Fall for eligible activities, energy efficiency, accessibility improvements, minor home repair, exterior rehabilitation, substantial rehabilitation, and rental redevelopment. The guidelines that we want to use for the program um, would be those that you set forth for the revolving loan fund. Um, so if you back, go back to September, and that document's included in here to tell you what the revolving loan fund guidelines were that you created. That would allow us to really focus on that same group you focused at 80% of AMI for the for the income requirements. This program does have some leeway, can go up to 120% of AMI. Um, any project that's over $10,000 will have a five-year lien on the property. Um, after five years, that lien's forgiven. If you sell the house before the five years is up, that, that owner has to repay Mish to that money. So whatever that may be. It did include the AMA guide or the AMI guidelines in the packet as well to show you what it is. We're requesting uh, an ask up to four hundred thousand dollars for this program. The second part of the program is a public amenity program. We can request up to seventy five thousand um, dollars. The component of this program is they're all considered one grant, so any dollars over four hundred thousand dollars has to be matched one to one. So for the public amenities, we're asking $75,000. We'll match that one-to-one -one with the enhancement grant, and it'll be used in the Maiden Lane Town Square project. Um, there's some qualifiers. It has to be in the downtown. It has to help with certain aspects. This project would qualify with all of these. I did meet with Mishta last week uh, for about 45 minutes to kind of go through the program and the availabilities. Highly recommended that we apply in the first window. Um, because as Greg said, it's only $8.8 million and it will go pretty quickly. Um, there are opportunities to apply for more dollars, up to $2 million per municipality, but you have to match them one to one. And then you get into sources of those funds and how they qualify and what you can use them for. And that's where we work with the revolving loan fund. If we figure out that we can use our revolving loan fund, we can still add that on top of this um, and just use those revolving loan fund dollars as we choose to. Is the does the revolving loan fund um, does that act as the one to one match or no? No, okay. there's there's no match for the for the four hundred thousand. There's no match. Oh, okay. Great grant. Okay. Yeah, it's the seventy five thousand for the public amenities. That's the then that would be the, okay. the one to one match, and we have those dollars. For okay, that. thank Just you, sir. Say okay. it a different way. We we thought we could also ask for an extra seventy five, which would be like free money for the town square project. Right. Okay. How many, we, how many people do we have in the revolving loan fund? Is that money used up now? Or no, we, we haven't been able to use it because we haven't figured out how we can use it yet. 
Kirk is doing some research related to that, but because it is not, because it is general fund money, we are restricted by the Constitution, I believe, yep. in our ability to lend it. Um, and so as it was envisioned, we haven't been able to implement it. This would, you know, we had appropriated $250,000 for that purpose. This would almost double that as a grant program. So as Jay said, we can, we can go ahead and start implementing it as a grant program uh, if we're fortunate enough to get this money or, to the tune of almost double what we were intended to deploy. Do we have people waiting in line that we would give them? We, to we have them? not rolled out the applications because we don't. Um, I think so, and this is under the belief that you have to be currently um, under code enforcement and being cited to be a part of this program. That's the one of the rules that came from the revolving loan fund. We're using that as a guiding document. You can it doesn't it's not a requirement of uh, Mishta to do that, but that was a guiding document so we can differentiate where the priorities are. I guess I, I, I raised the concern before that you know if there's homes that are not ADA compliant and we have people that are living there trying to uh, convert them so that they could so that they can have a wheelchair in their own home and stay in their home rather than having to sell their home. Um, that that would be that's not an area of um, light enforcement, but those are the people that we would hope to be able to stay in the house instead of having to sell. Them. Is there something in, so that would be eligible for the program? Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. Up to you in terms of whether you want to expand its use to include that. Is there something in our resolution that we're passing that? references the the current guidelines i don't think so i don't i'd have to I don't remember do we need up, to right? in our application indicate that we're strictly limiting to those guidelines or we just show that we already have those guidelines in place we were to modify them for this purpose that would be okay with the commission I, I believe that would be okay anything that we do beyond what they provide us is strictly up to us. It's the fact that we have a plan in place that allows us to execute more quickly than other municipalities. So if we need to modify it, I would think it would be okay. So if we're fortunate enough to get out, we can expand it. There's some logic for that, given we do have more money. If we're that fortunate. Two things I'd want to add. They do allow for 18% uh, of the grant for administration. That's above and beyond the grant amount. And October 1st, a brand new round comes out of $60 million. So another $8.8 .8 million for our region. So we could get this one. And then in October 1st, when the new round comes out, we can apply for that one and get it again. So there's some significant improvements that we could, we could apply to our community pretty quickly. And that this is meant to be the mechanism that Metro now uses to infuse these CDBG dollars and you know, it's exposed to what they used to do with the county. Yeah, I think it's 35 million CDBG dollars and 25 million state dollars that go together to create this fund. You said the second round comes out in October? October 1st, yeah. <clears throat> With modification, by the way. Well, like I said, this is on your agenda, your regular agenda tonight. Be good with that, and we can get our application in over the next two weeks here. Do you have any other questions you have about that? Hearing none. Matt, can you hear us? He's gonna come up. He's gonna come up. Yeah. 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 Well, Matt's gonna talk about some modifications to the bulk trash drop off rules of uh, compost center that you'd like to put on your next engine. Yeah.
So as Greg said, uh, we're looking to make some changes after we've had a full year uh, at the compost site uh, with the vault <laughs> dumpster. Um, we It has been heavily used. Uh, we have to go through uh, two dumpsters a week to get cleaned out um, uh, so just so we have enough room. And we're compacting down each time we go out there too. Um, so these prices are for um, to kind of regulate the excessive use. Uh, we're looking to allow residents a one-time use um, free as they should get with their payment um, into the bulk, into the trash, uh, the solid waste fund. Uh, but anything beyond that would be $150. Any non-residents would be $150 to start. One time, how often? What's that? One time, how often? Uh, they get one time um, each day we're open. So residents would have a free dump on um, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Um, but if they wanted to come again that same Tuesday, they would have to pay the additional fee. Um, and this would help offset our costs that we're seeing um, from exchanging the dumpsters out each week. So I could come every Tuesday and not every child, but twice on Tuesday. Correct. Exactly. Yep. Is that sort of volume? Uh, yeah, that's so what it's an eight time. by eight load, which is a typical bed size of a truck. Um, so you can uh, fit as much in the back end of your truck or a trailer that's eight by eight, um, take it to the site. Anything over that would be the additional cost. How do you monitor whether that person? comes back the second time. But we got this, it's gonna be the same attendant out there um, each day. So on Tuesday, it's gonna be someone out there from um, eight to eight to two. And they'll just keep track whether they come in place or not. So they have to show something to show. They, 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 everyone has a permit. Whoever is a, is a resident has a city permit bag to get into the site. Yeah, I, I did hear the complaint that people were trying to go out there and they were already full, but I didn't yeah. know if it was just that everybody was using it or... We we found it's a lot of landlords that are using it. They're cleaning out the houses and they're bringing U-Hauls and trucks and trailers and everything back to back and it's just excessive. So we're hoping that these would regulate uh, the use out there. I think it's a great idea. I know mm -hmm. the times I've been out there, uh, that dumpster's full so quick early in the yeah. morning and they're lined up down the street. So if you guys are okay with this, we would like to put it on the, uh, the agenda for next meeting. Yeah. Good. Good. Anything else from that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, our last scheduled item is further discussion regarding the uh, upcoming bicentennial. I'll turn it back to you, Mary. Um, so I, you know, obviously have a lot of people asking and we need to revisit this now. And I, you know, I know we talked about a couple of days, you know, just doing it. Like I know Tecumseh is doing it like a couple of days. I think Blissfield is too. I can't remember now. I read it. I don't remember now. But if we do those few days, a, one of the questions is, where do we want to do that? And what I mean by that is, what time of the year? Like, I know they celebrated, Gordon actually found, Commissioner Gauss found something, well, his cousin found something from the 100. Um, and they did it in September, and I know why. It's because that is when that land was bought was in September, because I had the historical museum look it up for me. Um, but we don't have to do it in September. They did. I know that's hard, because then you're dealing with football games for area high schools. You're dealing with other activities that get crazy, you're going to have our delicious coming right after that. You know, summer seems to be logical. I know that's what was brought up. You know, obviously that's as summers when both Blissfield and Tecumseh are doing theirs. I, I don't know, you know, if you have a time frame that you're thinking of, um, what, what a lot of people, the feedback I actually, I've actually talked to about the Bicentennial, what a couple of people from Tecumseh. And the feedback that they, the only feedback that they've given me on was A, this was just a more palatable amount by going with a few days, which we all agreed with as well. But also that, um, you know, maybe just having almost like a, like an open meeting, like a town hall, like we open it up and just say anybody that's interested. And then these people are going to come together and say, okay, now you're going to have to work if you come to this meeting, like you're going to have to be a part of these committees. But to open it up and not, that was the one advice I was given is to not just go out and pick people for these groups because that is 
where there were some problems and, and some of these other ones. So I'd like to make it, if you're okay with that, like make it some very open, it's not even like a meeting, it wouldn't have to be even on Zoom, just to like a open it up to anybody can come in, you know, for open house. Open house. There you go. I couldn't find the right word, but like an open house of like if you're interested in being a part of you know the bicentennial you know committee and then that's where that can go from there now i do know that there are some groups and i got stopped even in country market the other day um by two people with the same thought and i've heard this before um that are like well we really wanted to like you know we wanted to see something like this group maybe do something this month and like we would like to see something throughout the year well, that's fine. I mean, I think when even when we were talking about it, in my opinion, that's fine because if somebody wants to, if you know, the service clubs all want to come together and do something together, or just Kiwanis, or just you know, Rotary, and they want to celebrate the bicentennial, or if all the churches want to come together and celebrate the bicentennial, that's great. It's not our event. That's fine. Like I feel like that, and we can encourage that, and you know, and I can even you know talk to a lot of these groups you know, and, and, and kind of be that person, but it won't be city sponsored. It won't be anything the city's doing. It's their event, their thing. They're just celebrating the, the bicentennial. Like that's kind of how at least my take on that is, but I don't I know. Think that, I think that puts the experts in charge of that event, then, right? Yeah. So I, I agree with that. Actually, Madam Mayor, um, awesome. the centennial actually was held June 28th oh, through July 4th. Maybe it was the 150th. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. It was but it, yeah, well, I've got, myself. got a copy of the program. Yeah, because he's got a really cool. Yeah. June 28th through July okay. 4th. So, the, the Can I ask you to share that with the rest of us? I'll be happy to email it's like all a of It's like a picture of a. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got cool. the whole, I got the whole program here. Thank you. I'd like to see it. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. He just I'll be got happy it. To send it over. He just made it out. Historical Museum said they couldn't be yeah. there, he got some. Cool. <laughs> I'm sure if they keep digging. My, uh, my cousin was cleaning out a house or something and came across her. Um, but yeah, so I just, um, I mean, are, do you, what are you thinking for a timeline? Like, so that, because I want that, I mean, I feel, that's my opinion, that it should come from us, though, at least when this is going to happen, because the city would be putting it on for, you know, our side of that, for that, that big, you know, three days of events or whatever, you know, are we looking for, you know, like what things are we looking for? Are we looking for a parade? Are we looking for fireworks? I know we're trying to do fireworks the 4th of July, so we'll have a little experience with that. So we'll be ready for the bicentennial. Right, Jen? Um, you know, uh, but like, are we just, you know, what are we looking for? Are we looking to, you know, close down the streets for a couple of days and have some heritage type things, you know, interspersed throughout as well, like butter churning or, you know, things like that through the decades or something. Not churning butter. It can be anything. <laughs> like put that one out there. It can be anything like that, but I don't know. You know, what are your thoughts? Because I want to, you know, like for our event, even though there would be a committee, it needs to be like, what are what are you thinking? Well, I I, I think let's try to schedule the town hall or the open house. Yep. Sooner rather than later. Yep. Get some community feedback. See what the people want to do. And I think that that will put us. Drive yeah. us in a stronger direction. Yep. And then as soon as that's over, add that back to a, a pre-meeting conversation. Okay. Here's what people want to do. Here's some committees yep. we can form. You know, the people that come to that town hall or open house, hopefully they they would be willing to be on a committee for the ideas that they mm -hmm. share with us. And and I, I, you know, Carolyn, I know you do all the flowers, and I I'm gonna I'm probably gonna mess this up really bad. But my mom was talking about how Adrian used to be the chrysanthemum capital of mm -hmm. Michigan or the country or something like that. Mm -hmm. I and I just... Uh, the museum can tell you about that. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. They have a whole like, thing at a museum on it. And I know you're, like, I know you do a lot yeah. of the flowers and things. Yeah. So I just, things like that, it would be neat to have some mm -hmm. um, people who are really interested. Their, their, their hobbies and specialties to be able to share some of the things from the past. You know what? If you let them decide what time it is, get recommendations from the past. They give us recommendations, then we'll come back and choose. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, some kids that have athletes who might say, I want it during, you know, those dead weeks they have in the summer where the kids don't have games, they don't have practices, they don't have to seal the games. And they might be saying, well, really, that's the week we're going to go on vacation, so we don't want to have 
I need, everybody's going to have a reason for right. it, but just get their reasons and their understanding and just make the best decision with the information. Mm -hmm. As many people as we can. I know that um, I um, I do know that um, I go to the town and gown meetings, which is um, a part of the DDA. But um, so that involves LASD, Adrian Public Schools, Jackson College, Siena Heights University, Adrian College, and um, so I did. We really meet quarterly, but at the last one, you know, I brought up about this, and you know. We're going to be looking at logos. There's going to be things like this. This might be an opportunity for, you know, with college, you know, maybe it's a graphic design major, but it could be a high schooler. You know, it could be things, you know, it, it, it could come from any area. It could come from the tech center, you know, something like that. So I, I did put that out there a little bit on them already to start thinking about, and they were very excited about that. And the schools really do want to, you know, get involved with that and, um, I, I know that Sienna said, you know, they would maybe do, they kind of think they would like to do some kind of a hundredth day for um, us when they're in session. But see, that's another thing. That's their thing. They can do that. That's sure. great. It's not something we're in charge of. But I know, um, you know, Aiden Public Schools, he, uh, Nathan Parker was really excited about that and the prospect of, you know, let's get as involved in, um, you know, so we, as soon as we can get that, moving and stuff I, I can keep having those conversations as well with with that group but we do have a meeting coming up this month? Yeah, this month, April. Yeah, that's right it's april we got one month we're in april first uh so we can bring that up you know to them again and at least just put that in their ear because they and they were excited and like talking about you know maybe there's something that they can do just on their at their own campus or at the schools to, you know, about Bicentennial and having those discussions, but also to get them involved where maybe it's the logo or maybe it's artwork of some kind or something like that. So um, if we did this like open house, do we have to, I mean, if, if we're all there, but we're not having like discussions, we can all be there, yes. Can we just hear what the public has to say about it? We don't have to have it on Zoom or in, you don't have, have to, it. but I mean we can. I don't right care. There. I'm so I'm trying to make it easier for it not yeah. to get more work for you. I mean, that's we've not necessarily used Zoom for our open houses. I mean, it's something for you to think about whether that helps bring more people to it might. That's the meeting. There has to be something, though, a format that people online can hear. Mm -hmm. right? Like Kevin does, because he's kind of standing around, not at the microphones, just having a conversation. So they don't think that he could have done. Now, they have not been very well attended. So, point that out. You, you really need to do some substantial promotion of open something to be, get people in. I, mean, I think location wise, in terms of the library, when the uh, presentation on Moriyama, that was that was built for that mm -hmm. spot and would not have been conducive here. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about table wise and table talk and you know getting getting the feelings out with who's going to invite you know the churches, who's going to have the school reps, who's going to have mm -hmm. lots of rotary uh, reps uh, present, those sort of things. Figure the crosswalks there. City band, those sort of things. Yeah, so we'll need some time to like get that out there, so make sure that it's you know that they can make it work around their schedules as well, not like you know, hey, next week <laughs> that won't you know. So I think um, in in considering that we want to definitely promote enough, have enough time to promote that, but we also need to think okay. through you know, come Memorial Day. So graduations and all of the, or, yeah. you know, life gets busy for everybody right there. So let's um, make sure we get this in before that. Oh, yeah. And I, then, but also give us ample time to promote it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like beginning of May, mid-May, like, yeah. yeah, I was not thinking past that for sure. That was like last. Yeah, because I, I I think it's imperative to get it in before summer gets here. Mm -hmm. But I, I also want to give us time to promote it and mm -hmm. get it out to as many people as possible. Agreed. 
if you want us to talk to the library about room availability early in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. On the day that you're there a second Monday. <laughs> May 13th is the second Monday. May 13th is the second Monday. Would we get better Monday. attendance if we did it on the weekend? We did it the evening. I think people get busy on the weekends. But yeah, that's, that's just my Weekends, I'd be worried about proms and sports yeah, yeah, picking yeah. up for spring, and I'd be a little worried about that. The second uh, Tuesday of... The second Monday is the, Monday, the excuse me, 13th. The 13th, does that work? It's not Friday the 13th. <laughs> It works for me, but does it work for everybody else? Uh, well, it's not an official meeting, is it? No, I mean, and it doesn't have to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Works for me. It works for the library. Library closest. Oh. <clears throat> six o'clock, six to twelve. Six to eight. I I prefer six. Yeah. Six to seven thirty. Seven thirty, yeah, because I guess. I I, <laughs> I prefer. You could always put it on. Yeah. Seven's on one. Mm -hmm. So can you get? It, once you get that confirmed, can I mean, if if the library can do it, then can we get it where we're starting to get it promoted that we can all share it and get a hold of cool. anybody and everybody like you're on? Right. Yeah. If we could get maybe even just a save the date graphic, like that. something like that that we can get out. Because so. I I know people that have asked me, and I'm sure we all have people that have asked us, and then we can share it with those, and they could share it on. Okay. And we can get that out to the media as well. I mean, they come to most of our meetings, but at least then. Eventually. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Cool. Uh, one thing, too, the reason I would like to stay, um, for those of us that went to Japan, I know they brought up that they really want to come back for our bicentennial. And they brought it up several times. And I took it as they will make a special trip, whether the Michigan group comes at that time. Well, they actually, they, they won't because they come this year. They said they will come back, but they want to come back for the celebration part of it. So the sooner we can get, that's another reasoning for me wanting to get these dates, you know, by summer. So we're giving them like a year ahead because they do want to come and send some delegates here for our um for our anniversary. Unfortunately, we couldn't go to theirs because of COVID at the time, but um, because it was going to be the same way. We were going to go on and off time, but go to theirs. But um, I know they really want to come and I want to give them a lot of lead time on that as well. That that's another reasoning for trying to get this. And I I think summer works really well for them too, by the way. They did mention that at one point. So last time they came in July and they said that was a really good time for them. So yeah. So. Um, yeah, I just um, social media has been blowing up the last week or ten days about water, dirty water, smelly water. It's, I mean, we've talked about it in the past, but it's getting a whole lot of attention the last week or ten days. So I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know whether. We need to make some public statement about what's going on, what's causing. I mean, we've talked about we, what's we causing it. But I mean, we'll do the press release. Mm -hmm. I included uh, something in my newsletter about it as well. I mean, just since we're talking about it right now, it, it, it's just the, the, the compound that's called jasmine. It's an organic compound that is not harmful. It, but it is detectable by humans at extremely low levels. It's present in the lake water. So we use relatively more lake water, which we're doing right now, until the fourth well gets there, then it reaches a level that it's detectable by people. I just pasted it when I brushed my teeth before the meeting. 
<laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. You know, so it's still there. Uh, it's, it's very evident, but it's not you know, in any way harmful. When the wells are all back to full capacity, it tends not to be at a level where people can taste it. Do we have any timing on uh, the wells? I could tell you about wells not. Wells not online. Tonight. Uh, you know, I, I think it's only probably weeks away before we'll be back to pumping full capacity out of the well. We're also exploring additional, that Will is engaged in exploration about whether we can uh, add additional capacity to that well field, mm -hmm. which would drive more water from the ground. But in this particular winter, in terms of the presence of that compound, because the lake never froze up, Winter, increasingly, you know, that leads to more of the compound. Tastes like earth. Right. It's the, it's the scent you smell after a spring rainstorm. So it's even more pleasant, but <laughs> uh, uh, that is true. It is the same that that's called petrifor, but the compound makes what it tastes is. So, you know, it, we're working on it, and I know they've added back in the activated carbon, which they usually use in, in the summer, but uh, in the treatment process, but my own observation doesn't seem to make a big difference. You know, I don't know, other than engaging on social media, which is no, normally not a great practice. No, uh, we have put out, we will put out a very detailed statement. Thank you. Anything else we need to talk about? Or public comment? Huh? All right, at this time, we will begin public comment. Just to reiterate that we need you to state your name and address. We will start inside the city chambers first. After we have exhausted all public comment inside the chambers, we will open it up to Zoom participants. I have a comment. Um, my name is Melody Butler, and the address was I don't mind giving you my address, but I don't want to give them the details. Can you tell us if you're a city of Ada resident or not? That's and that's why I know you guys want that. I care about Madison Township. And I'm glad you're following the rules. But um, there's like five or six other rules, too, that I can name that haven't been followed for decades. So I'm going to be following that one. Sorry. Go ahead. Doug Spade, Adrian. I do want to comment that the water issue, we knew nothing about this coming up. It was a big topic on our show on Saturday. It was started by a gentleman who says he and his wife come to Adrian to eat often. And he had such a bad experience, they told the restaurant they love the restaurant, but they're not coming back. And he tried to call the city and whoever she, he talked to said they wouldn't take a message, that you had to talk to the water department. He got nothing but a recording and no call back. Now, I understand your concern about how you communicate this. I understand the concern about social media, but Mike and I are very legitimate local news media. And I can tell you that we've tried to call Mr. Sadler and email him, and he never responds to us. That is not the way to solve the problem. We would be happy to have him be on our show, on the phone, explain it. We ran the news story when the news release went out, but you can communicate better with the news media than you are. It only hurts you folks and I keep saying over and over, there's a lot of bad PR about the city hall and about the city that could be corrected. We're not here to give you a rough time. 
We're here to work with you and help things to be better. But city government people are not good, with the exception of Greg, at getting back to us. When we have legitimate questions, and we hear from listeners every day on questions and issues, we try to be very careful about your time or the time of city officials when we ask questions. But there is a communication problem. City Hall can do better. We're not the enemy. Mr. Spade, were you able to get, I'm just, and I'm just asking if we're being effective, were you able to get the letter that Mr. Sadler put out um, when he explained things? Were you able to find that? And yes. email. Okay. All right. Yes. And we use that on okay. the news. Okay. But we were trying to clarify our, our philosophy always is. And on our show, people can call and talk about the issues all they want, but we'd rather have the facts sure. to present to them. I was just, I was, I was asking, I'm just like hoping our reach is getting better. Sure. Sure. I understand. So thank you for answering. Thank yeah. You. And, and, you know, we just want to be able to get the right information. No. And thanks for asking that. Hearing no more public comment inside the chambers, we will now open it up to the Zoom participants. Uh, Ken Tokars, 110 South Locust, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Now okay. We All right. So I guess I want to follow up on Mr. Spade. Um, can you say your name, please? Yeah, please. Ken. Ken Pilkar, City of Adrian Resident, 110 South Locust. Um, uh, today's a perfect example of where the city needs to look at their processes and their communication. Um, I just happen to be listening, and I use the dumpster at the compost on a regular basis. Um, I'm kind of disappointed to hear that me as a single-family homeowner is going to be penalized because of landlords. If you're going to increase the rates, you should increase the rates different for residents than you are from landlords. Um, the other part with communication is, you know, you guys don't talk about or post what you're going to talk about in the pre-meeting agenda. So how is the general public going to know that you guys are going to change the rates in the process for using that dumpster? H how are you going to get public input and how are you going to communicate and tell the public, hey, we're going to change the rates and we want your input. I mean, based upon what I heard today, it sounds like you heard all you want to hear from Matt. And at the next meeting, there's going to be something on the consent agenda to approve the rate changes. And then for the next month and a half, you're going to have people complaining about how the, the rates were changed and how that wasn't communicated to the public. The other part of it with communicating to the public when you do change the rates, how are you going to tell people that it's gonna get changed. Are you gonna send something in the water bill? Are you gonna post something on the website? Or are you just gonna change it? And then when some guy or some lady shows up with a truckload of stuff and gets turned away from someone, that's how they're gonna find what kind of goodwill is that gonna to give to people in the community when they haul all their stuff over there only to find out, oh, I didn't get this sticker or I didn't do this or this was my second time over there. Please do something about your communication and the way you process and do things for the public. Thank you. Hearing no more public comment, may I get a motion to adjourn? Support. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned and we will begin our regular meeting out in the chambers, chambers at 7.05. I call to order the Adrian City Commission meeting for April 1st, 2024. If everyone would please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance.
I pledge to the Spirit of God of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it is one Christian under God, indivisible, and willing to be accepted for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Heap? Present. Commissioner Benke? Present. Commissioner Schwartz? Present. Commissioner Roberts? Not here. And Commissioner Miller? Present. Commissioner Castleberry? Present. Commissioner Gauss? Present. All commission members present with the exception of Commissioner Roberts. May I get a motion to excuse Commissioner Roberts? So moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Gauss and Commissioner Miller. Roll call, please. Mayor Heap? Yes. Commissioner Banke? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Motion approved by unanimous vote. May I get a motion to approve the agenda? No moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Banke with a second from Commissioner Schwartz. Roll call, please. Commissioner Banke? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Mayor Heath? Yes. Agenda approved by unanimous vote. May I get a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Schwartz. Roll call, please. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Mayor Heath? Yes. Commissioner Banke? Yes. Consent agenda approved by unanimous vote. Moving on to our regular agenda. Resolution R24-013 is from Community Development. It is a resolution to authorize submission of an application to the Mishta Michigan Neighborhood Grant Program. May I get a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Support. Support. Are there any public comments in regards to this resolution? Are there any commissioner comments? Just again, uh, comments from the pre-meeting um, with the understanding that this would uh, include uh, options for ADA compliance uh, with homeowners as well. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Gauss with a second from Commissioner Castleberry and Commissioner Miller. Roll call, please. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Casperi? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Mayor Heath? Yes. Commissioner Banke? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Resolution approved by unanimous vote. Moving on to public comment. This is general public comment. We will begin inside the city chambers first and then open it up to Zoom participants. For the record, please state your name and address and you will see your the time on the screen. Right there. There you go. That way everybody can hear it on Certainly. Zoom too. Um, Thank you. Got something to hand to you first. I thank you all very much. Uh, my name is Matthew Whitty. I'm from Raisin Township. Uh, my address is 6766 North Raisin Center Highway. Uh, that's a Tecumseh address. And um, I'm here today you know, as a fellow citizen, a representative of we the people here in this one nation under God. And I, I think the same as basically everyone in this room, person in faith. And um, like I say, a fellow citizen. And, and um, my wife, Vivian, and I are sponsoring an event for Lenawee County on May 22nd, okay? And our purpose is to get all locally elected officials uh, to attend this, this event. So I'd appreciate it if you would mark your calendars. Now, uh, the event, uh, we call it a review of public election data. And we have world-renowned physicist, Dr. Douglas Frank, presenting in person. Um, Dr. Frank presents his analysis of election data uh, full-time around the United States. 
and he travels the country to meet in person with state and local officials uh, about the analysis that he performs. Now, this is your invitation to meet Dr. Frank face to face and to hear his fascinating analysis and have the opportunity to ask him questions, okay? Um, if you do, uh, I, I, you know, I appreciate your attendance and you'll be glad that you did attend if you do go. Now the meeting is on May 22nd, that's a Wednesday, and it's a, a meeting in the morning at 11 o'clock and it'll be uh, right here at Hooligan's Restaurant, downtown Adrian, so it isn't that far to go. Uh, so I'd really appreciate your uh, making plans to attend our meeting. Now there's no charge for the event, uh, food and drink will be available for purchase to get you through the lunch time. And I hand you a flyer as a reminder that you know what the event is. Vivian and I certainly look forward to seeing you there. look forward to seeing you there. That's what I have to say. And I've asked that to say, you can't mention it more than the events that have been there, that have been there, that have been there, that have been there. And everybody in the room is certainly welcome to attend. Vivian does have flyers, so if you'd like to pick one up for the public event, that would be fine. The flyers that I handed out, of course, are for the what we consider to be the private event in the morning for elected officials so you get the opportunity to talk to Dr. Frank and ask him questions. So that's my comment and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hearing no more public comment inside the chambers, are there is there any public comment on the Zoom? Participants cannot talk today, sorry. Hearing no more public comment, are there any commissioner comments? I'd like to just say, I think we have the opportunity to congratulate the Adrian College women's hockey team for winning a national championship. I don't think we've said anything about that. I mean, we it's nice for the area to have something like that. Mary, uh, April is National Crime Victim Awareness Month, and uh, Chief Emmerich's in the back. I um, have worked in crime victim advocacy and, and child forensic interviewing um, for much of my career, and just recently I've, I've been able to talk with a lot of counseling agencies and people that work with victims of crime, and I have gotten so much positive feedback about Adrian Police Department. So in light of Crime Victim Awareness Month, I want to say thank you um, and thank you to the troops. Please let them know from me that I'm very proud of them and the work that they've been doing. And just want to, um, before we close out, just want to bring your uh, awareness that it is World um, Autism Awareness Day tomorrow, April 2nd. I am a mother of an autistic child, so I'm already wearing blue a day ahead, but um, wear your blue tomorrow and um, let's light the town up blue, but just to bring awareness that we have many, many citizens that are on the spectrum and, you know, and just to bring awareness to that and how we can interact better with those on the spectrum and and how that affects their socialization skills and, and what we can do to, to make it a better place for all to live. May I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor say aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.